and we are recording. Uh, in this tutorial, I asked you to do a very much more open-ended problem. And sometimes I think when students first come across open-ended problems, they can look at it and go, I don't know what to do. I don't even know where to start here. Uh, so this tutorial video is kind of going to guide you through it. It's going to guide you through me working through this open-ended problem. You weren't supposed to necessarily finish it all, but along the way, uh, we will come across, if you like, how we can put together different useful bits that we've seen about the Scala language and make it do useful things. So the, the problem that I gave you was, uh, let's try to create a domain-specific language where we can say things like uh, 8 meters divided by 3 seconds and the language inherently know, oh, we're talking about a velocity. Uh, so we can start doing type checked and, you know, correct calculations on measurements that know that, for instance, you can't add meters to seconds because they're different. So let's, um, let's start off having a look at this. And first of all, I'd like to suggest that we split the problem into two parts. There's the problem of how we model our measurements, how we say that we want to have types that are measurements that understand how big they are, but also what units they're in. And separately, there's the problem of a nice small language for expressing one of these measurements so that we can say eight meters. Let's start off with the question of how we model our measurements in the first place. And so what I'd like to say, and so we, we're going to kind of go beetling around evolving some code. Uh, one of the things that makes it hard to write instructions for this is that you don't necessarily just go linearly from beginning to end. You start building it and modifying it and uh, your, your design is something that you're going to be thinking about uh, as, as you create it very often. So let's start off with though with this idea that we want to have some sort of a measurement and we want that to take some kind of a, a value and for the moment let's just say that that's a double. Let's say that all our measurements are in double precision floating point. But we also want to be able to take a unit with it and well, we know there's different kinds of units. We, we know that there's, uh, there's meters for distance. We know that there's kilograms for weight. We know there's seconds for time. And, uh, you know, if we, if we go to the, um, the SI, uh, International Standard System of Units, uh, we can find that there's, you know, there, there's seven base units that the rest can be derived from. Um, but let's, for the moment, let's just worry about the, the top three. Let's just worry about meters, kilograms, and seconds. Uh, we might bring in amperes and kelvins later on, but, um, but I don't know that we're necessarily want, going to want to go into moles and candelas. Um, okay, so there's going to be some kind of a measurement. So let's say that that is a generic, well, it's some kind of a unit. Uh, and so this is now going to need to be uh, type parameterized across unit. Um, I don't know about you, but I reckon it would be useful for measurements to be a case class. So let's say we've got a case class measurement of U and uh, it's in some kind, of a, uh, some kind of a unit. And so already we can say, you know, val M is a measurement of um, eight. Uh, ooh, we would like to say that that is you know, eight meters. All right. I'm going to suggest that we would like to have objects that represent our fundamental unit of measurement. So let's start off with the first one. Let's say that there is an object called a meter. Let's say that there's an object that is called a second. And let's say that there's an object that is called a kilogram. Okay. Now I've got eight meters. I would like to be able to say something like um, val s is a measurement of eight seconds. And I'd like to be able to say that val v is, you know, m divided by s. All right. So I would like to be able to divide my measurements. Now, 
I've got a case class here and it's called measurement and it uh, takes a value and it takes a unit. Um, but it doesn't yet have a slash method defined on it, but we can. Uh, in Scala, uh, we can have methods that have symbols as their names. And so we can say that um, we can have a method called slash. And uh, well, let's do plus first. Plus is going to be easier because we, we know that we mustn't be able to do um, M plus S because we can't add seconds to meters. Uh, so let, let's do that one first. So def plus, and that is going to take some other measurement. And we would like that to be a measurement that uses the same set of units. So this U here is going to match this U here. And now it's saying, well, I've got to implement um, this, this. I've got to implement this, this function that I've just declared here. And what's that going to return? Well, in this case, I think it's fairly simple that, uh, you know, eight meters plus three meters, we want eight plus three and it's still meters. Uh, so we're, we're going to return measurement of uh, our value plus the other measurement value. And we are still talking about the same set of units. So that to me looks like we can now say val m2 is a measurement of say 12 meters and we can do things like m plus m2 and it works um, but if we go down here and do m plus s can't resolve reference plus with such a signature we, we, we can't um, add a measurement of meters to a measurement of seconds because a measurement expects it, um, the, the, the parameter that comes into the plus method to have the same type of units as, as it does. Okay, so far so good. So we, we've got uh, addition uh, working already. Um, let's now think about division. Uh, so let, let's see if we can get uh, meters per second to work. Now, in this case, it's going to be a little bit different because um, I want to say I want to take another measurement, but I don't want to constrain it to be the same type. In fact, you know, eight meters divided by um, eight meters should just give us one. It should just give us a number. Um, eight meters divided by eight seconds should give us um, meters per second. So we're going to need that to be a, a measurement that can accept sorry, a, a, a parameter that can accept a measurement that has a different unit type. So I'm going to need to say that this slash method is um, parameterized against another type, type parameter. So here, uu is not the same as u. That's, you know, this is, this is the other one. This is a different one. I could call it v. I could call it something else. I just call it uu because we're still talking about units, but we're not talking about the same units. We're talking about different units. All right. And this is going to be, um, well, what we know is we know that we want to say that it's a measurement and we know that we want to divide this value by the other measurements value. But what do we do about the units? Um, if we say, you know, our unit by other measurement dot unit ah. We kind of can't, can we, at the moment? The, you know, what is this? That, that's of type U, but I haven't said anything more about it. This is of type UU, but I haven't said any more about it. Is there a slash method on those? The compiler's got no idea, so it's going to, um, it's going to complain that it doesn't think it necessarily does. So this is where we can start to uh, realize that, well, we are defining these units. We can say, these units all belong to a trait. These units all belong to a trait that we're going to call SI units. So let's say trait SI unit. And so let, let's say all of these objects are members of that trait. Uh, extends SI unit. Uh, extends SI unit. OK, so far, so good. Um, but we haven't actually said that these are SI units. We've just said they're U, which could be anything. Uh, to specify that these have to be SI units, uh, we need to put what's called a type bound on this parameter. We need to say 
that whatever you, we're past, whatever this unit type is, you, uh, it is going to be a subclass of SI unit. And uh, so down here, this U is the same. This U here is the same as this U here. So that's a subclass of SI unit. Uh, this U U here is different. Uh, and so we haven't necessarily said that that's an SI unit yet. So let's put the type bound onto this one as well. So now we've said that we have a slash method, which takes another measurement, uh, which is has a, you know, it, it, it's type parameterized to something else, which is an SI unit. All right, so far so good. Uh, except we still can't resolve the symbol slash because we still haven't defined it anywhere. But now we've got somewhere that we can go and define it. We can say, all right, compiler, I'm going to teach you how to define, uh, how to divide units. And so we can say, that the trait SI unit has a method called slash that takes as a parameter another SI unit. And on the trait, we can leave that um, undefined. We can leave that abstract. Trait, you know, a trait on itself is abstract. We're just saying that, you know, to be an SI unit, whatever extends SI unit is going to implement this um, particular method. And so now we have squiggly underlined on our meters, our seconds, and our kilograms, saying, well, OK, you've said you're going to have a slash method for units. We haven't got one yet. Uh, so let's go and put one in. And so let's say def slash of you, uh, whoops, si unit. And uh, I'm not sure what it is yet. I'm going to leave it just throwing an undefined ex exception. So let's just get the things to the point where they will tentatively compile, uh, though they won't work yet. Um, and so now we've said that, all right, there is a way of dividing units. And so now our measurement class can be divided by another measurement. And whatever the unit, is, the, you know, the, the, the result of those units is going to depend upon um, what we get from dividing our units. OK. So, so far, so good. And now val v is going to be, uh, well, it's going to be some other kind of SI unit. Um, let's now start to define a few of these. We're not going to go all of the way because I then want to jump across to using implicits uh, to, uh, sorry, implicit conversions, etc., to help you do to write a domain specific language so that we can do these things. And we're not going to get our um, SI units mechanism perfect, uh, especially we're, we're, we're not going to deal with all of the cases so that it always uh, can catch all of our errors in the compiler. Um, you'll see that this, this will end up being, um, so if I go V down here, uh, all right, but it's a, a val V SI measurement of, well, you know, uh, it, 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 it's, an, it, it's a, what is the return type of this uh, method? And well, at the moment, it, it's, it's going to be an SI unit, uh, which means we're going to get a measurement that is typed against some kind of SI unit, uh, but we haven't said what kind of SI unit. And so we're going to find that actually we're, we, we, we're not necessarily, for instance, be able, going to be able to yet check that we're only adding velocities to velocities. We need to do some more complicated stuff for that. But let's not go that far. Let's just go as far as, you know, putting some uh, beginnings of things together uh, to get, um, you know, what might be valid for a single tutorial as a solution of how we can have measurement classes that divide and that add and that multiply. So let's go and work out. Well, let's have a look at this meter case. And if we're dividing by something else, well, what do we want the unit result to be? And so let's say that we're, for the moment, we're going to match. And we're going to say that uh, in the case uh, where we are matching and we're finding that the unit that is passed in is a second, we want to return. What do we want to return? We want to return meters per second. So this is where I'm going to suggest that for this first pass, for the moment, 
let's have another kind of unit that is a division or a, a relationship between particular um, between particular different SI units so that we can have kilograms per second or meters per second or kilograms per meter. And so let's say that we have a case class and I'm just going to call this a composite unit for the moment. And I am going to say that this has a numerator, which is going to be some sequence as if of SI units multipl multiplied together. And it's going to have a denominator, which is some sequence of SI units, um, which is going to default to being the sequence dot empty. All right. So far, so good, uh, except that I now need to say that this is going to be uh, <clears throat> an SI unit, in which case I need to define a slash, which will take another SI unit. And in this case, for the moment, well, if we've got a composite unit, meters per second, and we divide it by seconds, so we want meters per second per second, um, well, that for the moment looks like we just want to add the unit into the den denominator. And so let's, for our first pass at this, um, and I'm going to put a fix me note in here. Uh, this isn't quite there yet. Let's say that this is going to return a composite unit of, well, the numerator and uh, the denominator and let us add the unit that we have been passed in uh, to that. Okay, so now we've got composite units that can divide pretty much anything. So meters per second up here, well, what do we want to say? We want to say that that is going to be a composite unit of um, meter and, oops, sorry, a sequence containing meter. And we would like to pass in, uh, you know, now, now this has a denominator of per second. All right, so we've now got, um, we've now got this working. And in fact, that looks like we could do this for, for, for most of these. Um, so let's, for the moment, let's make that a default um, on the unit. Let, let's say uh, that this is just, you know, in, in the trait, if we don't define it anywhere else, um, then the result is going to be a composite unit of a sequence with this unit and UU. And then let's delete those so that we don't override them. Uh, in this case, let's override it so we don't end up misting our composite units. All right, so now we've got a slash method that, well, it works for the moment, but the problem is that, you know, as soon as we divide anything, we don't get a velocity, we get a composite unit, and uh, we can add composite units to composite units, but we, we sort of haven't quite worked out what happens with, um, if, it, if it goes back to normal. If we got meters per second and we multiply by seconds, we don't get back to meters. We've still just got a composite unit. Ooh, that's a bit ugly. That's a bit ugly. Um, well, let's not worry about that for the moment. Uh, but so hopefully we can see to start with that we can start building these trace, uh, these traits and we can start um, defining objects within them and we can put some case classes together. And so we can carry measurements around that have their values and their units. For the sake of time, let's jump on to the second part for the moment. How do we change this from saying, well, I want to say, uh, you know, measurement of eight meters. How do I change it so that instead I can just say eight meters? Well, to do this, let's put in one of these implicit classes. Let's put in an implicit class that says, um, well, so first of all, let's, let's go with, so val m is 8m. Now, there is no such method called m on the int 8. So let us 
create an implicit class that is going to teach the compiler what we would like it to do when we say 8.m. And I'm going to say that this takes a single, let's call it ready for unit, ready for units, and it's going to take a single value parameter, and that is the, the value, and for the moment that's an int, and I can say this extends any val so that the, um, the compiler can do uh, some optimizations on it. Basically, it can, uh, behind the scenes, remove a lot of the code about actually creating this class, and it can just call the function directly. And I'm going to say that def m on ready for units is going to give me a measurement of that value in meters. And that should be a measurement of uh, meters. Now, um, that's going to complain because meter is an object. Meter is not a type. So if we say meter.type, OK, now we've got a measurement of meters. Meter.type, that looks ugly to me. How is about we define a type alias that says that distance is meter.type? All right. And so now down here, we can say that we have a measurement of distance of eight meters. And so here already, M is looking pretty happy. And so I can say things like eight meters plus 16 meters. And the compiler is happy. Um, what if I wanted to say <coughs> eight kilometers? Um, so let's say we want to have a k method. And k, well, at this stage, we don't yet have the units. We only know that we want to say mm, that many thousand. So let's say that def k instead, it doesn't return a... It doesn't return a measurement. It returns another ready for units because uh, we're still waiting to add our units on the end. And let's say that it returns a ready for units of the value times 1000. So now 8km is kind of happy. And I can do things like I can say 8 meters plus 16 kilometers. So far, so good. That looks like that is pretty happy. I can say things like eight dot kilometers divided by uh, three dot. Ooh, I don't have seconds yet. So, all right, let's go and define def seconds, which is a measurement of time. Uh, oh, I haven't defined time. Let's go up here and let's say that time is an alias for second dot type. Now I've got a measurement of time, and let's say that that is a measurement of value in seconds. And I can say eight kilometers divided by three seconds. And I'm going to get a one of these um, measurements that has a set of composite units. Now, the next thing I might want to do is, for instance, start being able to cancel out numerators and denominators. I might want to, for instance, uh, also uh, do something like on a measurement, I might want to have a runtime check for my composite units there. Or I could decide, no, 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 I really want this to be type checked a lot more carefully. And I could start trying to have types for velocity uh, and other kinds of measurements. Um, uh, but that would require quite a lot more work. Uh, for the purposes of this exercise, I'm just getting you to put a few things together and to have, if you like, case classes for units, to have traits, to have um, traits where uh, we, we, we teach the members of that trait something that looks like an operator, a slash, and uh, teaching you, you know, implicit conversions, implicit classes for how we can give a method to a type that already exists. I think that's kind of far, far enough.